What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be diving into updating data with Eloquent. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? Well, you can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link can be found in the description down below. Updating data in Laravel is pretty similar to inserting data. The biggest difference is the fact that you're going to update one specific row, which means that we're going to work with an ID again. If we navigate to our web.php file inside our Rouse folder, you'll see that we have an edit forward slash route parameter, so an ID, which will show one specific page, while we also have a block.update route, which will persist the data to the database. So let's start off by creating our first page, which will be the block.edit page, which will show the edit page. So inside our block folder, let's create a new file called edit.blade.php. We could simply copy paste the entire create page inside the edit page. So let's do that. All right, let's save it. Now on the block overview, so right inside of our front end, we should make sure that we add a button somewhere inside one specific block that will redirect us to the edit page. Let's say somewhere right here where we want to add a button called edit. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open the index.blade.php file. And let's go right under our span right here, which is made by a user. Let's create an answer. Let's add a text of edit. We have an href, which will be the route method, which will then call the block.edit page. Inside our web.php file, you'll see that we have a route parameter. So let's make sure that we pass it in as well. So comma which will be the post ID. Now the post ID is coming from the for each loop right here. Now let's also make sure that we add a class to it. So let's give it a class of block, italic, text-green-500, the border bottom is one, and the border is green 400. If we save it, navigate to the browser, refresh the page, you'll see an edit button right here, and if we hover over it, you'll see that we have our forward slash block, forward slash edit, forward slash one, which is the route parameter of the block, so the ID. Now, if we click on it, you'll see that we've been redirected to the forward slash block, forward slash edit, forward slash one page again. Now, apparently the screen is white and I do know where that's coming from. If we open the post controller, scroll down to the edit page, you'll see that we're not doing anything right here. What we're simply going to do right here is return a view to the block.edit page. Now we're going to add a second parameter of an array since we're going to return one specific post. So let's say post is equal to the post model, colon, colon, where. Now we're going to check based on a specific ID. So let's say the ID column where the value is equal to the ID inside the right parameter. Finally, let's make sure that we get the first value. Now with the post that we have right here, we could technically add values inside our input fields of the current data. So let's navigate back to Google Chrome and refresh the page first. All right, let's change up the data real quick. Inside the edit page, let's start at the top. We have add new post. What we want to do is to say edit. And what we want to edit is the post title. Then let's scroll down the for each loop of errors is okay. We have our is published, which has a type of checkbox. Now the way we can handle that is by basically saying, well, get me the post is published. If it is equal to true, then say checked. Otherwise keep it empty. Now we have our input field of the title, which doesn't have a placeholder anymore, but it has a value and the value is the post title. Let's do the same thing for our excerpt. Let's replace placeholder of our excerpt with value is equal to the post excerpt. Same thing needs to happen for the input field of minutes to read, which is a value of, let's say, post min to read. Finally, our body is a text area, so we can't add a placeholder or a value, excuse me, but we can add it inside the opening and closing text area tag of post body. 
Let's save it, navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh it. And I got a typo right here. Let's go back one second, sorry. Right here, this needs to be a colon. All right. Right here, you can see all, that our input fields have a default value, which is the current post. Now we're not done yet because we have our form of, because we obviously have our form opening tag, which has an action, but at the moment it's to block.store, which needs to be changed to block.update. Now we're going to update one specific post again. So let's add a comma and let's add a post ID as a second parameter. Now the method can stay equal to post, but we're actually going to perform a patch method right here, which actually can't be done in HTML. To fix this, we need to add a blade directive right under our CSRF token of add method, which will convert the post into a patch method. Let's test it out. Let's go to our post controller, our update method, and let's add a DD of, let's say, test, save it, navigate back to Google Chrome, add a different title for a second, and our excerpt as well, click on submit, and as you could see, test has been printed out. This basically means that the flow of our update method works as well. What we get to do right now is basically recreate what we've done before. Right inside of our Update methods, let's remove the DD test. All right. Let's first make sure that we make a call to the post model, colon, colon, where. Now we need to tell Eloquent what we want to update. So in our case, it will be ID. Then we need to chain the update method to it. Now the update method accepts an array, just like the, just like inserting data, as you could see right here. Now we're going to pass in key value pass right here, where the key will be the column name inside the database, and the value will be the request that we have right here. Now let's do it. So let's say that we have our title, request title. We have our excerpt, which is the request excerpt. We have the body, which is, which is coming from the request body, obviously, the image underscore path, which is coming from the request image. We have the is published, which is coming from the request is underscore published, which actually needs to be a Boolean. So what we could say is basically if it's equal to on return a true, otherwise a false, we have the minutes to read which is the request min to read. Finally, let's make sure that we return something. Finally, let's make sure that we return a redirect to the user. So return a redirect to the route method and the route name is block.index. All right, let's test it out. Let's save it, navigate back to Google Chrome edit our page. So let's say a title of test, an excerpt of test, and the minutes to read is two. Let's not upload the file and let's submit it. You'll see that our post has been sorted based on the updated at, and the first post that we got right here is the one that we just updated. All right, now if we navigate back to Visual Studio Code, open our database client and the post table, you'll see that our row has been updated, but the image path is empty. This is not something that we want to do. Right now, we're telling our update method right here that whatever happens, the image path should be updated. Now, the request object that we have right here gives us access to two different methods. Let's test it out one more time with a DD. And what we want to do DD is the request all. If we save it, navigate back, edit our test, let's say test two, and set the published on submit it. All right, right here, you'll see that the image path has not been added. And since we're using the patch method inside our form, it will not update the image path inside our database, but we do have a underscore token and underscore method. And if we pass in the request all object inside our update method, it needs to find these columns as well. What we can do is adding the accept method rather than the all method. The accept method provides the same output, but it allows you to exclude certain fields. So what we can do is replace all with accept. And what we want to accept is an array. 
with two values. The first one is underscore token. So basically the keys inside are all method. And the second one is underscore method. If we save it and navigate to the browser, refresh the page, you'll see that underscore token and underscore method have both been excluded. Now let's go back for one second and let's select a file. I've already done that. Let's submit it. And as you could see, our image has been added now. So let's go back. Let's copy the request that we have right here. Let's remove the DD. And let's remove the array that we have inside our update method as well. And let's just basically paste what we just copied. All right, let me align this a little bit. There's one more thing that we need to check right here. If we navigate back to our edit.blade.php file, you see that all of our input fields have a name. Now all these names should be equal to the database column where you want to use either the all or accept method from the database because it will check directly whether the column exists or not. At the moment, it won't work because inside our post table, we got a column name defined called image underscore path and not image, as you could see right here. It's called image. So let's change it up to image underscore path. All right, now inside the browser, let's just give it a title of new title. Let's select the file. All right, I've already done that. Let's submit it. As you can see, we have been redirected to the forward slash blog endpoint and we have our new title. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code, refresh our post table, you'll see that we have a new image path for our first post. Now, if we try to submit it one more time, so let's edit it without an image. So let's name it title, navigate back, refresh it you'll see that our image path is still visible. Now, the last step that we need to perform for our post controller is to add validation right here. Now, what we actually can do is basically copy the validation that we have inside our store method, paste it inside the update method. All right, and we need to change up these values for a little bit. The title is required. Let's paste the maximum right after the required method. All right, because we're going to say that the post title should be unique, but the title can be changed. So let's add a comma and let's concatenate the ID. Even though the title is required and it should be unique on the column posts, it can be changed with the same ID. Now the excerpt is required, the body as well. The image path should not be required. So let's remove the requirements that we have. And that's mainly because we don't want to throw an error if a user does not update the image path. And that's basically it. Let's test it out one more time. Let's edit it. Let's say new title, submit it. As you could see, it has been updated. Now this was it for this video where we dived into updating posts inside our database. In the next video, we will dive into deleting data with Eloquent. If you do like my content and you want to see more, Leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.